Welcome back here on Hawks Sports Talk. Uh, we'll go into the coaches segment, and uh, it took us a little bit of time, but finally we're able to corral the 16th year head coach and Jen Rosati. Uh, been quite some time since uh, you've actually been in studio, but how you been? I'm doing fine, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit of, uh, do you catch up on some rest at least? Not really, <laughs> not really. It usually takes a couple days. It's not going to help that we turn around and go to Maine this weekend, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do at this point of the year. You guys are coming off uh, a three-game win streak. Uh, you have that big game coming up on uh, Sunday at Maine. Uh, how's this team improving uh, throughout the course of this America East Conference play? Um, well, you know, I think that there's – different things I can point to in each game. And, um, you know, the last two games we've had to kind of find a way to grind things out and make plays at the end and make free throws. And I think our guys have done a pretty good job of of doing that. It it doesn't mean we couldn't be a little prettier along the way at times. But, um, you know, I thought that we showed a lot of character in our win down in Stony Brook. I don't think that that's an easy place to play. And I think Stony Brook's a pretty big physical team and we handled ourselves pretty well there. And, um, you know, sometimes these bottom of the league teams can be traps for uh, for a team looking to kind of move ahead in the standings. So, um, you know, at this point of the year, you just kind of want to take one game at a time, get that win and move on and focus on the next one. So hopefully we'll be a little bit looser and have a little bit more fun heading up to Maine, who's currently in, in you know, a tie for first place. Uh, Maine's a team that's definitely has improved over the mm-hmm. course of the past couple of years. Um, I guess kind of reflecting back on the past, let's say, three, mm-hmm. four years, how's this conference really boosted itself, especially in women's basketball, that I don't know if it's turned upside down, but some of the teams that uh, yep. notoriously have been battered now are starting to get better. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, Maine has a, has a pretty rich tradition um, you know, dating back to the 1990s, back when I played in college, I remember playing Maine in the first round of the NCAA tournament at UConn. So they have had their success, and then they they went through a, a tough patch there where they really struggled to to get in state kids to stay home and attract kids up to to Orono. And um, you know, Rich has done a really nice job of going in there and, and turning things around and and attracting those foreign kids to come over and and really kind of give their program a boost. And um, so it is kind of interesting because you have Vermont who, you know, used to be one of the teams we would compete for for championships in the early 2000s, and now they're sitting there with an 0-10 record at the bottom. So, you know, I think you just kind of have to take one year at a time. I think, you know, as a coach of the, of the program at Hartford, it kind of, um, you know, makes you feel a little bit good that you've been able to sustain some success and that um, your frustration is when you finish third or fourth. Um, because not every program's been able to, you know, stay in that top one through four position for as many years as we've been able to. We're here on Hawks Sports Talk, sitting down with uh, the head coach, Jen Rosati, of the Hartford Hawks women's basketball team. Uh, last night's win against Binghamton uh, was your 13th overall win, mm-hmm. and it matches the exact total from last year. Um, I understand that there's still six regular season games to go plus postseason, uh, but can you give us a comparison between – last year's team and this year's team and how you guys have uh, kind of evolved and you still have those six regular season games mm-hmm. to go. Well, you know, I think that, um, you know, we're kind of a little bit better in every facet of the game um, compared to where we were last year at this time. And some of that has to do with just some kids growing up. You know, I think, you know, even if you look at where Amber was a year ago and where she is now in terms of her consistency um, and understanding of what her her role is and her – uh, what she needs to do to help us win besides scoring points. And, you know, you look at Sherelle, who has uh, is one of the top guys in the league in, in double-doubles on the year, um, it, it, compared to a year ago where she was in and out of the starting lineup because we couldn't get that consistency from her. You know, you look at Deanna and, and what she's done at the point guard position, and um, a year ago I think she was really starting to fade and hit a wall, you know, as a freshman. So um, you kind of want to hope that all these guys, Alyssa Reeves and Latrice and Shanice, are all just a little bit better than they were last year at this time, and that's reflected in our record. And um, you know, we hope that we're going to win a lot more games than 13, um, you know, and in the postseason as well. So we just got to make sure we keep working hard to improve and we, we kind of keep our ultimate goal in, in the back of our minds, but take care of the day-to-day things right now. We had talked about it uh, the past couple games, grind wins, that's been mm-hmm. the popular word. <clears throat> um, you're now at, you know, I guess trying to make your descent towards the, the end of the season and 
It's been a long season. People are tired now. Uh, obviously, Janelle Harrison got some rest yesterday due to the shoulder. Uh, how do you find a way to, I guess, keep everybody fresh? Because you need to make this surge late in this, you know, for the next month or so going into the postseason, yeah. uh, March 7th and 8th and up at Binghamton. Uh, it's certainly a challenge, I think, that every coach faces. Um, how much do you practice, you know, because you want to get the reps in, you want to keep improving, but you also don't want to wear guys out even more than they have to. And then you're talking about the guys that aren't playing a lot of minutes and you want them to get those reps in practice, but then you have guys playing 35 minutes and you want to rest them. So it's a, it's a fine line and it's a balance that – um, we, I think we've done a good job of finding, you know, we, we tell our kids, like, if you're tired right now and that's the excuse you're going to use, then, then you have no business being in a championship game. You know, like at this time of year, this is what you play for. So you got to dig down and find a way and we can tailor some practices to lighten it up and we can make sure we do more mental, maybe preparation than physical, but you know, you got to be able to bring it every night out. And we've played everybody once already. We're going through two times now. So we should be able to mentally prepare for these teams just based on watching film and knowing what we were successful or not successful with the last time we played them. So, you know, hopefully that will play in our favor as we go forward through the next few weeks. And it probably is easier from your position knowing yesterday Amber Bebko is not 100%. She's sick and she found a way to play in that game. And, you know, when she needed a breather, you know, hey, coach, I need two minutes on the bench. And uh, she actually played a pretty good ball game and led the way. Yeah, you know, I think that um, – you know, Amber really never uses anything as an excuse, which I like about her because I think that's what young players these days need to learn. They need to learn how to play through everything. They need to learn how to shut things out. Um, they're way too distracted in li- with life in general, um, and they have a hard time stepping onto the basketball floor and letting go of everything else and just focusing on basketball. And Amber's one of the few guys we have that, that does that exceptionally well. And she kind of always has, but this year in particular, it's like at a whole new level. You know, she could be sick, she could be hurt, she could have like barely practiced the day before, like trying to recover from an injury. But when the game time shows up, she's going to give you everything she has for every minute out there. And, and I keep imploring the rest of the team, like, this is who you want to follow. This is who you want to play for and who you want to play like because she's she's playing with the sense of urgency that you would expect out of a senior who's really really hungry we're inside the coach's corner here on hawk sports talk we're sitting on with the head coach uh jenna rosati the women's basketball team team has a record of seven and three in the conference playing 13 and 11 overall uh kind of i guess keeping on the theme of amber bebko uh you and her in the past couple weeks able to hit some milestones she eclipses mm-hmm. a thousand points you get a uh, 300 victory I know they're individual goals and milestones, but how can something like that, that celebration of that achievement, help the team overall? Well, you know, it's funny because I think that, you know, if you had, if you had really asked Amber to be honest about her accomplishment maybe two years ago of wanting to score a thousand points, that would have been a pretty high priority for her. Um, but this year I feel like she really has finally she's a different player <laughs> like decided that it's just not enough for her mm-hmm. you know like she she's going to walk away from here with as many points as she scored but if she doesn't walk away with from from Hartford with a with an NCAA tournament appearance she's going to be heartbroken um it won't take anything away from her career individually but um you know it's what we talked about when we when I recruited her you know like that's what she wanted. That's what she came to Hartford for. So um, it is it is awesome to be able to look back and celebrate, you know, what where she's come from and um, how few people really recruited her and thought she was going to be this really good Division One college player. And, you know, look back for me 16 years ago and think that I'd still be at Hartford with 300 wins under my belt. But when you're sitting in February and your your sole focus is on winning the next game, it's 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 hard to really celebrate those milestones because what what you want is so close and what you're trying to achieve is right in front of you and it's nice to see Amber so focused on that team goal of winning every game rather than what she's scoring. She she's just been a winner this year and so it's made it really easy for me to want to coach her and want to give her everything that I have. Who's an underclassman um, that has grown up? I tried to, you know, we've talked many mm-hmm. times, tried to stay away from the word surprise. Uh, but who's a who's an underclassman that has really kind of grown up and uh, contributed to the team, whether it's on the court, off the court, yeah. in the box score or not? 
Well, you know, it's it's hard to really say because I think that, um, you know, sophomores and freshmen are, are typically pretty inconsistent. Um, you know, Deanna has been fairly consistent this year. Um, Morgan's been pretty inconsistent this year. Um, but they both have had a lot of opportunity to play. Um, I think that probably my biggest disappointment early um, that is turning into like a little bit of sal- salvation here late is that Alyssa Reeves is coming back along to where she needs to be. Um, you know, last year we, we were able to really rely on her in the conference play. She was very consistent and she averaged like probably seven or eight points and seven or eight rebounds every night in conference. And she really struggled early in the year. And it would have been very easy for both me and her to kind of give up on, well, we got other post players now, like Sherelle's playing better. And at the time, Katie was back and Christy was playing better. And then the freshman came in. But, um, you know, to her credit, she never really stopped. There was like one stretch where I remember talking to her about, you know, where her focus and intensity had gone. And since that moment, um, she's never really stopped re- working really hard to try to earn her way back into the lineup and earn my trust again. So um, I still think that we could be a lot better if she played better. But I'm seeing glimpses of the confidence, at least, that she was playing with last year. And I'm hoping that going into this stretch, her experience of playing a lot of minutes in February last season is going to be pay dividends for us um, in the next couple of weeks. Well, a couple of good things on that. She had her uh, season high 12 points against Albany, mm-hmm. uh, the top team. And going into this matchup on Sunday, uh, career high 15 points last year against the Black Bears with, I think, about six boards. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that works out. Um, Before we let you go, we had the National Signing Day yesterday Mm -hmm. for college football, and they talked about recruiting and people, you know, verbally committing and then changing schools and going, (laughs) you know, over here. Um, I know that you're constantly recruiting, you're constantly watching, adding on to making sure your team is winning. Um, Are you going big? you going small? Like, what do you look for in the recruiting process, you know, going into each year? Well, it obviously always depends on who we're graduating and and what our needs are. Um, You know, for next, for the 2015 class, we signed three players and we feel pretty good about, um, you know, signing a post player similar to a Sherelle type of physical body. We signed two wing players that, but, you know, that are a little bit probably better handling the ball than Amber and Shanice, but maybe not as good a shooter. So we we filled some gaps there. Um, So for the 16 class, it's kind of, a tough one for us because our junior class has been so inconsistent in terms of their health. You know, you're talking about when we brought them in together, it was Christy, Mallory, and Caitlin. And, you know, like they really haven't been able to do a whole lot in their career um, to kind of give us an idea of what we're going to be missing when they leave. But that that's who we're essentially looking to replace. And then we're already looking at our sophomores. So we see, all right, well, Deanna's going to be – a senior when this 2016 class comes in. So who do we want in there when she's about to be an outgoing point guard to come in to be an incoming point guard? So there, I mean, there's a lot to think about and it really doesn't end. And it's very different than football. Like our cycle is different when our kids sign is different when they commit is different. And usually when they commit, they it's, it's pretty binding. It's not like football where they switch at the last minute. So at this point with the 16 class, we are really focused on the point guard position. We didn't bring in a true, true point for the 15 class, feeling pretty comfortable that between Deanna Morgan and Mallory, we've got that position solidified for next year. Um, but the year after, we want to make sure we start grooming somebody um, to be ready to take over. And so uh, we don't really know exactly how many scholarships we're going to end up having based on who's going to graduate next year. But uh, we do know that we would like to have a lead guard that can really handle the ball and bring us some toughness. And then after that, we'll probably just look for the for the next best player we can get. And sometimes that's what you, that's what you hope for is that somebody who's just really good that'll come in and play regardless of what position they are but I'm um, hoping that our young posts are going to keep developing and that will be in good shape in the years coming forward with Janelle and Darby and and Cassidy and Alyssa Reeves and and this kid we have coming in July next year so we really got to make sure we shore up that that guard guard spot so right now that's what our focus is but you know in a couple months it could definitely change <laughs> <laughs> Coach, we appreciate the time. Thanks for stopping in. Safe travels to Orno, and best of luck this Sunday. All right. Thank you.